Hello, my friends. Um, evening time here, just settling down, uh, getting ready to eat dinner and getting a shower and call it another day. Uh, today, while I was working, I uh, listened to another video from Schaefer Cox, and it's very impactful to me. He tells his story um, pretty much up to the point where before they entrapped him and and uh, then arrested him, and they tried for you know years to to try to get. Uh, trap Schaefer Cox and so they could arrest him and the reason why is because he was teaching people and educating them uh, about these principles of liberties about the purpose of government the limitations of government and the rights of the, ind the individual and he was very successful in this people were listening to him he had a lot of people following him he ran for office and uh, did very well, which scared them as well. And then he also was organizing militias, kind of family units to help and defend each other and to watch over each other. And the federal government saw him as an extreme threat and sent uh, FBI agents, uh, just him, uh, just for him, I should say, six of them. And their whole job was to entrap and to provoke him. And I think you should listen to this story. I think you should take the time and sit down and listen to this story. It's about 30 minutes. But it, it appears that a lot of times we're too busy to find out the truth and to do something. And I'm asking you to listen and watch this video. Thank you. They transferred out the FBI and uh, U.S. Marshals out of Fairbanks, and they brought in six federal agents just for me and the militia. Now, it's their policy, and it's not just something that they kind of let under the rug. It's their written policy that any time there's a group that might uh, weaken or disturb uh, the powers that be, uh, you know, control over the people, that what they'll do is they'll come in and they'll try to provoke an incident that would then make them appear justified in bringing the bringing the whole group down and 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 just disrupting and splintering the whole thing. So that's what they did. And first thing they got to do is they got to start out terror assassination because if you kill the man before you can name, then you'll just make a mark. So they started out with that, and that caught us totally by uh, surprise. And then, let's see, I had, I think, six or seven actions going it all at the same time, and then they just finished it all off with, I just got a tax audit now. So uh, <laughs> it's, uh, they're, they're, they're really coming at us. Um, started out with these charges with me and my wife, and then uh, uh, they followed that up with another uh, felony charge of, of uh, unlawful contact. I got uh, an attorney who's a, a friend of mine, and he was just, just baffled. He just didn't. He's like, I don't. Well, I don't know what to say. This is not. None <clears> of this is 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 typical. I, I'm kind of confused. I got to you know call somebody, figure out what happened. This is. None of this is, is, you know, in the ordinary. And that's when you went to that house. What house? Oh no no no. This is. So this before is, this. This okay. is two weeks later. Yeah. Oh okay. This was all in about the span of three weeks. We just <laughs> sort of got, got, uh, job. You know, all at once. Uh huh. Um, but it was good. It was a blessing. This in, in, I don't know if it was in disguise, but it was a <laughs> it was a blessing. So then we got all these charges pending. First one it gets dropped in three days, but makes headlines all over the all over the country and all over the world. Okay. Second one gets gets uh, just held for a month or two and then gets dropped. Then we respond to a Liberty Bell call where this lady's got cops coming in her house and she said you can't come yeah, in and, right. mm -hmm. and uh, she said well go get a warrant she said, we're coming in anyway and and she said well I want some witnesses around here because I got a feeling that you're not following the law and so everybody shows up there you know that with the with uh, the Liberty Bell 
Works great. The uh, Liberty Bell, in case somebody doesn't understand what that is, and if they don't know, what is it? Uh, the Liberty Bell is an automatic phone network that we have in town here with about mm, six to 7,000 members in it. And any time that somebody gets in a situation where they feel like their rights are being violated and they'd like to have some, some witnesses around, then they just call the Liberty Bell operator. Mm -hmm. And the Liberty Bell operator message instantly to all those people that so-and-so could use some witnesses witnesses at whatever address and then if you're around in the area then you just stop by and um, just get your cell phone camera there and just kind of you know watch what's going on and it just keeps everything on the up and up and it's just done some really great things and this time it was doing doing great things because they didn't have a warrant and they just were kind of being defiant and you know they need to they need to follow the follow the <coughs> law so got arrested there and the cop come up me puts my hands in hand, grabs my hands and man they teach them the most horrible like voodoo grips <laughs> I'm gonna have to learn some of those that was a that was a good trick and uh, he, I said well am I under arrest didn't arrest anybody else or hassle anybody else I said well I'm, am I under arrest and he said uh, yeah I said well what for he said I don't know I gotta go look up some laws <laughs> <laughs> and it's on the recording too. <laughs> that's the funny part huh. So we, um, <laughs> there was, there's that, and no charging document, no charging document. Went to the arraignment. The DA went ballistic. Wanted me to uh, not you'd be court ordered to not do any more public speaking, not hold any meetings, or keep, stop operating the Liberty Bell, and just and just went off the deep end. But there were so many people there that there was enough pressure that they didn't. It would have been too embarrassing for them to go that against. The, the laws of this nation to do. So they, they didn't do that. But then... And now when you say they, who are you talking about? I'm talking about the judge and the prosecutor and all the state folks. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. they're not even really state folks, which is another thing we figured out, which is, I think, one of the reasons that we're in such great danger right now. So then, shortly after that, um, we get a knock on the door at our house, and all the while, we don't know what's going on. We don't know where this is all coming from. But after the fact, it turns out that there was these six federal agents up from Aurora, Colorado that, that came up here just for this purpose that were just pushing all this stuff. You know, if they can't lock you up in prison, they'll tie you up in court. And we've been building enough momentum and the biggest thing that we've been doing that's been so powerful is education, is just teaching people about the law and about what the founding fathers envisioned and about your rights that those come from from God and we establish governments to protect those and and that's the only job that they can do just teaching people and we've been just turning out these these courageous folks mm -hmm. and and that's dangerous you know people thinking people is a ideas are a controlled substance these days so anyway it's these agents pushing this <coughs> so these we get a knock on the door and these uh, these people are at the door, and they say we're here to get Seth Cox. That's our our one and a half year old, our, our little baby. And they say we're we're gonna we're gonna take him and and uh, check him out. And you know all this stuff, just <laughs> one after another, one after another. All these attacks are just coming from every every direction. And so I, you know, of course I'm not gonna cooperate. I know they're up to no good. But I said, well, you know, what am I going to do here? So I thought, well, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi did this one time, and it worked. So I went, I'm not the man you're looking for. And they just turned around and left. No questions. I just, I'm not the man you're looking for. And they just walked away. So right then, Marty and I left the house and, um, and started living in safe houses, running from these people. You know, this is all just politically driven, you know, mischief. And it turns out, at the end, what had happened is those, those federal agents had filed a complaint of child neglect. And their basis for that was a picture on Facebook of my little boy on the living room carpet playing with ammunition. I mean, just a staged picture, you know, just playing choo-choo chains with, with ammunition in, a, in an ammo can. Oh, isn't that cute? You know, take pictures and then we put it up, you know, never too early to start them, you know. 
up on on Facebook, <laughs> and then so then they use this as a basis to how did they, well, they get on Facebook, Facebook? They yeah. can just go in. I sure. think the FBI thought up Facebook. <laughs> I think that they invented that to get us to all just put that stuff out. There. So um, anyway, now they're going after the the uh, our our baby, and we're running from them. And of course, our first inclination, which is is I think mistaken, is if you've got nothing to hide, then and you're not doing anything wrong, then you've got nothing to hide. Okay, the honest man has something to hide from pirates, and when they're acting like pirates, the honest man needs to hide. So, uh, our first move was we said, well, we would love to come on do an interview, sure. And they said we said, but we want our attorney to be there. And they said, oh no 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 no, can't do that. We said, well, then we want it videotaped. They said, no, 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 no. There can't be any records made of this. And this is the Office of Children's Services saying this, that's being pushed by, the, by the, the feds. And so we said, well, you guys are up to no good. So that's the end of peace negotiations now. You know, this is ridiculous. And so we just quit cooperating with them entirely. So then they went to, the, to a judge and got a writ of assistance, which is, by the way, the thing that started the Revolutionary War was writs of assistance. And um, they, they took it down there to the troopers because the, these federal agents, in order to orchestrate an event, they have to have some degree of local cooperation. And they took it down there to the troopers and, and was trying to get them to you know, serve this writ and come kick in our door and take our, our baby away from us just in case, just so they could check him out because he might be neglected playing with ammunition on the floor. And so they take it down there to the troopers, and the troopers say, well, we don't have the, the manpower to safely execute this writ, and we're not going to have anything to do with this. And they said, well, what are you talking about? Why? why? And they said, well, we, we're afraid that there would be counterattacks from the militia within hours if we did this, and we just don't think there's, we're, we're totally in no way prepared to deal with this. And it probably also helped that a lot of those troopers know us know Marty and I and that that kind of a thing was met with a high degree of suspicion uh, right off the bat. I, I think that that helped probably more than we know. But anyway, come to find out the what the supervising agent had said, the words that came out of his mouth, quote, like verbatim, was this. Our plan is to try to take Seth away from Schaefer and Marty. And we believe that will be sufficient to elicit a display of force, at which point we will shoot all three of them. Now they needed some cooperation to get this, this showdown on the road. And naturally, if there's a big shootout with me and all of the, this movement that's picked up all of this uh, momentum, then it would probably you know, fragment and splinter that. But you know what? God took such good care of us this summer. And we should be dead right now if it wasn't for his, his uh, provision. And like you, uh, that we read in the Bible just a minute ago before we started, that though your enemies are camped around about you, that he will deliver you and that you will not be ashamed and that you cry out to him. We saw that. Well, not only did out. we see it, we felt it in an amazing way. And it wouldn't be right for God to take such great care of us in the face of such horrendous <coughs> wickedness and for us to not proclaim the, the mighty protection that He put all around us. Mm -hmm. There were so many miracles that kept us safe. Um, people, people at all levels of government broke ranks and risked their own jobs and their own livelihood to help me and Marty. People stuck their neck out there. It got so bad that the Fort Wainwright commander told Marty and I that we could have political asylum on post. Because these guys come to town and they're trying to get people to cooperate on with, with this, this, this big plan to get a shootout. And they started catching on and their consciences came through. There's nothing to do about those guys. Couldn't they kick them out? No, that, I, the, and, and even like really high up powerful people. <clears throat> and this is one of the problems that we've got, Dick. There's this, this kind of a charade government, but then there's like the boots on the ground real government that's just totally unaccountable. And the other thing was they were DEA agents, Drug Enforcement Agency. 
Now, I've ne I don't even drink coffee. I've never so much as smoked a doobie in my life. I've never even been around drugs at all. And so I was a b baffled initially, well, uh, you know, why do, why do they have drug enforcement agency <coughs> coming after me and Marty? It's because every time that they bust a drug dealer, they get to just keep that cash. And so they have this huge cash under the table budget and they can go around doing things that would get a tremendous amount of scrutiny if it showed up in the, as a line item in the budget. I mean, kill a young couple and their baby it doesn't look good going through the congressional bu budget office. And so they do it with this, this cash. Now, there might be people out there who are not believing this. And I totally understand because you know what? I was fighting against this kind of corruption and I still didn't quite believe it. And you know why I didn't believe it? Because I didn't want to believe it. I wanted mm -hmm. to not believe it. Because if this was true, it meant that things are way worse than I had ever imagined. That hard times were ahead. It would have popped my bubble of delusional bliss. It meant that I would, I would have a moral obligation to roll up my sleeves and cry out to God for deliverance and undertake the, the ugly task of opposing this rather than just, you know, sitting on my hands singing Kumbaya. Mm -hmm. So that's our summer. We <laughs> spent our whole summer uh, running from these guys. Eventually what we did is we went into court the judge wanted us to go in for a private, for a secret court, and we said, "Forget it. We're not going to do that." You know, and I sent the command staff uh, down there, and they said, "No way. You want to pub you want to meet with Schaefer? It's got to be public." And we went down there, and we didn't say a word about the law. We didn't say a word about, or it's a pretended law. Nothing. All we said was, "Look, this is a po looks like a politically driven attack, and there is no sense starting a war over this." And we just want to live at peace with everybody. And that's, I'm sure, what you guys want. And these guys will come to town. They'll start this big hullabaloo. And then they'll just fly to the next town. And we'll be left here with town torn apart. And so we just put in a, made an appeal to the sensibility of the locals that we don't need to fight with each other. And these guys are trying to get us all revved up for a cat fight and it's insanity and we said judge we don't want a war but if you want a war we've got one hell of a war with your name on it but if you want peace that's what we want too and the judge said well that's very encouraging and the, and the uh, attorney general said we'll get this to go away and that was the end of it we haven't heard anything more so we kind of won that battle because of God's grace but now we've got they're still here in town and um, we just decided that now it's time to just quit, you know, being silent about this, and especially to to point out God's God's mercy. And you need to you need to hear from Marty on that. Do you have a question? Did you have, have a question? Well, the question is how many people are in the militia? Kind well, of goes away from our. Yeah, yeah but that's right. That's okay. There's about five hundred in the militia in mm -hmm. in the in the whole interior. Now there's different levels of 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 you know active and inactive and different levels of training but there's about 3500 guys we've been working on this for about three and a half or four years mm -hmm. and the whole goal and purpose of that is defend all aggress none the whole idea is to get to know your neighbors and if things fall apart then you know the good Fairbanks folks can pull together and and hold it together because it's, it's not a malicious militia it's not a malicious that. militia no right it's 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 but there are some of them out there definitely are and mm -hmm. uh, and there's, well, you know what, there's trigger-happy cowboys in the militia that we have to kick out because, you know, that's not what this is about. If you're just wanting to keep your family safe and live at peace with people, then this is it for you. But if you're angry and, and wanting to, you know, go pick fights, you'd, you're not welcome here, mm -hmm. you know. But there's trigger-happy trigger cowboys in the federal government, too. And you've got these guys in the militia that just want to fight, you know, not in our militia because we don't let them stay in there. You got the, these guys that just want to fight, and then you got these feds that just want to fight. And there's no point in fighting if we all just respect each other's rights. Then we can all get along and be fine. Mm -hmm. So we are not going to aggress anybody, but we're also not going to tolerate any aggression from anybody. I mean, it didn't come to it, 
But, and I'll say this on, I mean, they got my phones tapped, so they know I'm saying this, so it's nothing new to put out on TV. If, they, if there came a, a time where they were endangering my family, you bet I'd, I'd kill those federal agents. And what kind of a father and husband would I be if I wouldn't? Would I lay, you know, sacrifice my family on the altar of, of submission to the, to the wicked state? No, that would, that would be despicable. We would highly criticize anybody who did that, stood by and watched in history. And we've got to reckon with the fact that, that that's our time right now. Now, we had those agents with 3,500 guys. We've got tremendous resources at our disposal. And we had those guys under 24-hour surveillance, those six trouble causers that came up here from, you know, from the federal government. And we could have had them killed within 20 minutes of giving the order. But we didn't because they had not yet done it. And it's not right. They're people too. And they've got just as much uh, ability to repent as anybody else. And there's no sense in it. Now, how they rationalize what they do is between them and God. I don't think it makes any sense. But we want to have forbearance and patience and peace towards, <coughs> all, towards all men. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and everybody. But God's grace and His providence um, has just been amazing. It was really hard on, on Marty and I, you know, being uprooted and getting smeared all over the press and having these people hunting you down, you know, and new mother and, and just, a, you know, a little baby and living from house to house, you know, with just a rifle and a sea bag. But at the same time, I think God was teaching me personally something there, um, and that was to hold all my my possessions and my home and my personal peace with an open hand. Mm -hmm. Because when you just run off and leave your ho your house and your business and everything, and you just run for your life, you know what's the the verse that says you know head for the hills, and if you turn back for the for your cloak, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what it was like for us. And these folks were in hot pursuit. And that, that really taught me the value of my wife and my family and God's provision. He gave us everything we have. And He can take it away and instantly give it back again. And we're A-OK -okay in, in mm -hmm. the midst of that. That's something that we had to work through together as a, as a couple, you know. And... I, uh, Marty's got three points that are on that that uh, that topic that she was going to share. So I'll, I'll let okay, her go ahead. Um, well, <laughs> uh, three points that we were talking about in the Jeep. We're like, well, what do we? There's so much. There's such an abundance of information and and um, facts about what happened this summer that it was like, well, we need to narrow it down for time's sake. Um, and we were bouncing it back and forth to one another and we decided that, you know, the first was that you, you know, you kind of, you see these things happen to other people and you're like, wow, that's kind of, kind of messed up, that's screwed up. And, and you, you have inklings of, well, this system might not be perfect, there's, there's some corruption. But you don't, you don't realize how corrupt it is and how really the enemy uses this system to wage war against God's people. And you don't realize that until it kind of comes barreling down on you. And that, it really struck home with me. You know, I, I knew that, that things were screwed up and that and that the system was corrupt, but it wasn't until they came and attacked my family um, needlessly and and just really were seeking to steal, kill, and destroy um, that which God um, see, sought to bless. That you, you you start to that I started to realize how corrupt it really was, and you know once you see how corrupt it was, once I was in it, it was like wow how are we going to fight this? You know, how are we going to overcome? There's, you know, we're, it felt like we were outmanned. You know, the, the federal government seems so huge. Um, they, their resources seem, you know, unmatched. And it was like, how, how are we going to win this? There's no way that, um, 
we're going to be able to make it out of this at least in one piece you know we might make it out alive but is our family going to make it out in one piece are we you know is our child going to be safe is it going to be is he going to be taken to some other home and taught lies about his mother and father and so out of that I had to come to a full realization that God was the ultimate um, warrior you know just as as Joshua um, led the people of Israel into the promised land God God commanded him to to um, be strong and courageous mm -hmm. for he was going to be with them and he was the one who won the battles and he was the one that fought and it he only required his people to be faithful to his word and obey him and um, you know and then David really spoke to my heart you know reading about David and, and realizing that here was a, a man who made mistakes who was you know who was sinful just like we are um, but who was a mighty man of God and who was a man after God's own heart and it was because he had faith he believed that God was going to be the one to save him and uphold him and deliver him and the Psalms just became um, living bread and, and, and a refreshment and encouragement to my spirit and really that is what sustained me was um, God's word and his promises in the word to that he is going to deliver his children from evil and um, you know there's just so many specifics you know about the snares that the enemy puts you know at our feet and God puts our enemies in those snares and how um, the enemy our enemies use deceit mm -hmm. and lies about us to try and um, make us look a certain way so that we're abandoned by others who who would want to help so you know it's just over and over and over in scripture it just showed that that um, the enemy does seek to destroy God's children but because we are his children and because God is righteous and faithful and love now you know we we made it through the battle the biggest battle was with OCS trying to keep Seth safe from um, you know maybe well-intentioned but but people who didn't understand who thought that it was their place to take care of our son the son that God gave us to protect and um, make sure he was safe and nurtured and um, and and by the way they OCS kind of got suckered into it you know once OCS figured out that the whole thrust of this was the feds trying to now OCS as a whole is wicked and vile and horrible and should be you know thrown in the garbage can but there were some good people in there that once they figured out that they were being used to start a, a shootout they were backpedaling 100 miles an hour so like kudos to them for they you know they might be confused about whether children are property of the state but they're not nearly as sinister as those agents that came up here that were just mm -hmm. trying just trying to mm -hmm. start a shootout mm -hmm. and they you know started backing off so just to put a point of clarification there yeah for, for that yeah yeah there were definitely in all areas you know in all the different areas um, where we were being attacked or where the enemy was trying to use them as instruments to come against us there were there were good people who listened to God when he um, poked them you know to, to to do something they obeyed and it was because of their obedience that we experienced his mm -hmm. protection and his provision and um, but the you know we won the battle God won the battle for us um, but the war is still waging um, the enemy is still out there because of um, perhaps even because of the victory he is the ultimate enemy Satan um, you know he's he's not going to just let us go he um, if he knows that God has great things for us he's not going to stop waging the war and um, the war is waging there are more battles to be fought and we're still fighting <coughs> battles and we're still having to rely on God's protection and provision and um, we're, we're seeing that every day and and uh, just so thankful to him and um, thankful so thankful for the prayers of others during that time 
Um, we had people that we know specifically of who were praying for us, and I know there were many others um, that we don't know about, but the battle truly is won on our knees. Um, Amen. It's, 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 it's true. Our battle is not against flesh and blood, although often it, it seems that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> if you've been hurt or wronged in any way, that can be changed. We need to talk about jurisdictions. We need to talk about what's proper um, and how we got here. We did a lot of research this last summer, and we came up with some, some amazing stuff. Just so uh, people need to know that. We need to get together. We need to, to hang by one another. Because let me, let me say to anybody out there, <coughs> if you are going through something where they are aggressing you and abusing you, you call me. Because we will help you. Because after what happened to us this summer, we take our duty very seriously. And it's not just me, but it's all of, of the people involved in this. We will help you. And you need to be on your knees praying to God because He is our deliverance. But we also need to stay together and, sh and sharpen one another and edify one another and, and take care of each other. And... Uh, I just reach my hand out to any of you that are in that spot and thank everyone who reached their hands out to, to us when we were the object of the aggressive despots that are the powers that be. If somebody wants to get a hold of you, who will they call? What's the number? Uh, well, you can Google Schaefer Cox and okay. sort through all the trash and get my <laughs> phone number somehow. Um, or you can just uh, you can dial 590-9903. Okay, 590-9903. That's, that's, yep, that's my cell phone number. Okay. And it's, I'm easy to find and hard to catch. <laughs> All right. Well, it's good to hear your testimony. Appreciate that. Very good. Yes, sir. Uh, I misspoke that email address for the website. It's republicofthenitedstates.org, republicofthenitedstates.org, and please click onto the history tab. It's all verified and documented evidence. Okay. And then the 1st of September, what time? December. I, I mean, 1st of December. 7 o'clock in the evening at okay. the Carlson Center. At the Carlson Center. Yep. We're going to be there. Um, we're going to lay out all the the evidence and then we'll probably just kind of present it to the to some of these folks and say look it's kind of, it's kind of time for you to to shape up we urgently need diplomatic relations to develop mm -hmm. between this out of hand uh, powers that be and the people who are getting fed up with it because if we don't establish those diplomatic ties we are going to result with blood just by default and, and, and I don't want to spill anybody's blood, and I sure don't want to have any of my blood spilled or any of my people's blood uh -huh. spilled. And there's no reason for it at all. It would be insanity for us to do that. It's, there is no reason. And so people need to listen to reason and avoid that. We can all live it. There is no reason that we shouldn't all live at peace, but we've got to establish diplomatic relationships between the powers that be that are out of hand and the people that are here that are, that are fed up. Schaefer Cox. He's a United States political prisoner. He's a victim of the deep state. He was entrapped, set up, and kidnapped by the government. He's being held in one of two secret prisons called the CMU's Communication Management Units. There's one in Terre Haute, Indiana, and one in Marion, Illinois. Um, they were set up illegally. Um, they shouldn't even exist. Uh, when we do a FOIA request to see who runs them, it comes back because it's not a government agency, so they don't have to tell us. Um, he uh, was being charged with uh, conspiracy and solicitation to commit murder. In August 2017, the Ninth Circuit Court heard his case and they dropped the solicitation charge. And uh, one of the things that they did mention was that there was no intended target. Um, the judge said, if I have solicited someone to help kill Mickey Mouse, um, is it, can it still be a kind of solicitation charge? So that's kind of how bogus uh, his, char his charges are. And he will be resentenced um, this fall. Um, he's a great guy and thousands of people love him. Uh, we're also looking for an attorney um, in Illinois to help us with some things. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs>